Sierra Medical Report with Dr. Bill Deagle and Tim Alexander, Earl Sterling. Uh, Dr. Bill will be right back. I think I hear him now. Is this Bill? No. Well, he'll be back in just a second. Um, getting a bit, a bit of an echo here. Okay. Uh, as we look at the uh, strategic situation today, uh, U.S. Navy is launching F-A-18 Super Hornets off of the USS uh, George H.W. Bush Super Carrier over Iraq. At this point in time, uh, they're simply on uh, recon missions. Uh, they haven't bombed anything yet. Now, of course, they're reconning the same forces that uh, we, the United States, along with our Saudi Arabian uh, and Qatari allies have been funding, arming, supporting, and commanding the ISIS uh, radicals. Um, you know, it's uh, the globalists and the Zionists who are behind this really have nothing but total contempt for the stupid goy. Uh, they're setting us up to get back into uh, Iraq, but it's not about Iraq. It's about Syria. It's about Iran. It's about a general Middle Eastern war. Uh, that will morph into the Third World War, or at least that's what they're planning on. Um, time will tell exactly how that uh, happens. Uh, already they're talking about a second desert storm. Remember, the ISIS operates primarily in Syria as well now as in Iraq. So if you're going to go after them, that means you do airstrikes not only in Iraq, but in Syria. And that's what this is all about, because it's a way to get uh, American and allied fighters uh, bombing Syria, uh, supposedly to stop the ISIS radicals. Uh, that's what all this is all about. Um, Iraq has asked us for uh, airstrikes because they're desperate. Um, their large uh, Bala oil refinery is surrounded by ISIS troops. Hey, Tim, I'm back. And this is Dr. Bill. He's back. Okay. Yeah, please well, I, continue. I started without you. Yeah, I was just saying um, the uh, USS George H.W. Bush is launching uh, F-A-18 Super Hornets. Uh, at this point in time, we're not doing airstrikes. We're doing a recon, and we're reconning the ISIS radicals. But, of course, we and our allies, Saudi Arabia and Qatar, are funding, arming, directing, equipping, controlling these same ISIS radicals. That's crazy, isn't it? Is that is that out of the out of the box crazy? Well, it, it is, but it isn't. I mean, it really, this is a, a globalist uh, and Zionist uh, ploy to get us involved there, and they think we're pretty stupid. They think the Goy are, are incredibly stupid, and uh, we're going to sit still for it. And uh, the ISIS operates more in Syria than they do in Iraq. And of course, when we go after them with uh, military strikes, well, where will we have to go? Gee, golly, gee, uh, maybe Syria. So this is uh, something that they've tried to do for almost two years now, is to come up with an excuse the public will accept to strike Syria. And, and the problem course, with Syria is that that's immediately gonna bring us in conflict with Iran and Russia. Right, and Iran, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Iran, uh, uh, the foreign minister of Iraq says they may ask Iran for military assistance against the ISIS. And uh, what we're creating is a giant firestorm uh, that will involve Syria, Iran, Lebanon, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Iraq, um, and basically all of the Middle East. This is the general Middle Eastern war that BB, and I call him BB666 Netanyahu, has been working uh, very hard to arrange for the last, oh, two or three years. Um, it is almost certain that this war could morph into the Third World War. But of course, you know, that hasn't happened yet. But uh, what's happening strategically, geopolitically, is insane. 
but it's insane from a human perspective, not from a demonic perspective. And that's, uh, you know, we go back to the thing that uh, you don't, you really can't understand this because it doesn't make sense from a human perspective, but it does uh, from a demonic perspective. Satan wants another global war, and he's going to get it, and his minions are determined to get it for him. What's amazing uh, to me is that how stupid our leaders are, how uh, imp- how uh, passive and impotent our religious leaders are that are not screaming to the top of the of their of their pulpits that you know they're they're so afraid they're losing their 501c3 status they won't speak out against these well they they, they need to now i i do know that uh i know some orthodox uh, priests that have been uh, uh pretty vehement but uh, the eastern orthodox are kind of a uh, a group in and of themselves. They're they're not afraid to to uh, well, speak I'm, out. I'm, I'll be proud of that. That that's the type of Christians I think I'm proud of, is that ones yeah. that are going to actually you know. It, it, if you don't have a mouth, you're not a Christian. If you don't have an action, you're not a Christian. You have to hear and do Shema. Well, and and the 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 absolute BS that's coming out from the mainstream media is incredible. The uh, I, you know I give a uh, what I call the dreaded five BS flag award, and on my my news blog and have five little flags that come up and it says BS 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 BS. Uh, anyway, um, the uh, uh, the Telegraph, which is one of the largest papers in London, been interviewed by him several times. Uh, they are saying that uh, the ISIS uh, terrorists now have seized Saddam Hussein's chemical weapons stockpiles. Well, you know, uh, sorry, Charlie, but they've been there for years. Uh, if you look back at uh, the history of uh, us in Iraq, Saddam Hussein did have a trump card in the first Gulf War. He had at least 19, uh, we called them scuds, but they were really modified. Uh, they were all called all Hussein missiles uh, that had chemical warheads on them. And he, by continuing to fire uh, his scud type missiles in Israel and Saudi Arabia, he was demonstrating during the first war his ability to put ordnance on target. And, uh, you know, he communicated to us at a high level that he had the ability to cause massive deaths in Israel. And uh, for that reason, the first Gulf War, we did not go into Baghdad. And then for a number of years, there was the partial occupation of Iraq, and there was bombing even under uh, Slick Willie, Bill Clinton, and so forth. And after a uh, period of uh, of uh, real austerity forced down his throat, he finally agreed to destroy his chemical uh, warheads. It wasn't too long mm-hmm. after that that we repaid him for doing that by uh, drumming up uh, the the uh, the lies that led to the second Gulf War or, or Iraqi War, and uh, we invaded and went all the way to Baghdad. Supposedly, we eventually caught him and hung him, but if you actually look at the pictures of the guy we hung and all the other pictures of Saddam from the time he was in power, the teeth don't match up. Uh, whoever we, if, if we really did hang the guy, he was a, a double. Uh, there was a Russian air uh, transport plane that left the night before the invasion and it's theorized that Saddam was on it and spent a few billion to buy himself safety in Russia. Uh, that's speculation, but it, it, it kind of fits what happened. In any case, there is no chemical weapons stockpile for the ISIS uh, troops to have seized. But we're being told now, see, they're, they're you know, uh oh, these characters, they got chemical weapons. So it's the usual uh, yeah. propaganda yeah, just, psychops yeah. to get the public to behind, well, we got to do something. Let's at least bomb these characters, you know. Right. In fact, that's the latest uh, hoo-ha I heard, is that, oh, that the uh, uh, ISIS has now seized the chemical weapons. Crazy. Yeah, there are no chemical weapons to have been seized. Right. Okay, Bob. We don't have a lot of stuff, but we have some things. Uh, I'd like you to stay on, though, because I think we have, we don't have enough to kind of just go it alone. I think it's going to be... you know, 
things are slowing down in terms of what news we can get. Welcome back, and uh, uh, Tim, you're going to stay over an hour number of because we we have news, but we we need to kind of flesh it out and kind of connect it to all the other dots because uh, what I see happening is a cornucopia of converging disasters: uh, economic meltdown in Europe, Middle Eastern war in Syria and Iran. Uh, Ukrainian situation trying to pull it's like the prophecy in Ezekiel 38 39 says and they, and I and I'm against you Gog, Chief Prince of Meshach, Tubal and Russia and such so putting the hooks in the jaw of Russia and the Islamic nations with them and pulling them down into the Middle East they are literally being pulled into this war they don't want to go to war Russia does wants to get a market economy they have economy based on oil now China is trying to not have is hyperinflation blow their country apart they're polluting their country like crazy, producing all these goods. China's superheating right now. They have a huge debt problem. Half of their economy is literally funded by what we call shark loans. Uh, this situation is going to get much, well, yeah, much well, more. you know, over 80, uh, almost 80 mm-hmm. percent, uh, latest poll uh, of the American population does not want to get involved in any kind of a dispute uh, in, in Iraq again. But you know what? The American public doesn't control America. Right. Uh, the, the, the global banking cartel families and Israel controls America. The political class in North America and most of Europe uh, has been so corrupted by virtually unlimited money because when you are legal counterfeiters like the Federal Reserve, you need a trillion, you print off a trillion. There is, and, and, you know, politicians, uh, whether like prostitutes, tend not to be very moral people. They tend to do a lot of really terrible things for money. Well, uh, you know, the globalists have the uh, an infinite amount of money, and they have set this up now for many, many years. Uh, the Federal Reserve uh, alone in the United States has been here over 100 years now, and they own politicians all over. And you literally have these worthless bums in Washington, in London, etc., that are goose-stepping towards Armageddon. And I don't know what goes through their 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 demonic minds, their their sick minds, their narcissistic minds. Somehow, you know, if they think they're going to survive. Now, about a year ago, in London, in the UK House of Commons, enough people kind of woke up to the fact when we were about to attack Syria. Uh, the United States and Britain and France and Israel were about to attack Syria because, quote, unquote, Syria had all these chemical warheads they were going to use. Right. Uh, and Russia sent a big battle fleet and said, well, guess what? You may attack Syria, but we'll be in there with her. And enough people in, in the House of Commons said, ho, ho, hold it. We're all going to die. And the, the narcissist system worked in their favor. But this whole thing in the Ukraine and in uh, uh, the ISS in, in uh, Iraq are back doors. They want, uh, Ukraine is designed to tie Russia down, and ISS, uh, ISIS uh, is designed to give us the cover, the psychop cover, to send our aircraft into Syria. And that will begin it all. I mean, it just, every day we move another little step closer to Armageddon. And yes, it's insane. It's so far beyond insane. It, it's, it's demonic. But the, the political class is so terribly corrupted and so terribly blackmailed that, uh, you know, once in, in, in uh, a year ago in, in the UK, uh, they saved the day, but don't count on it happening again. These characters are determined to come back, and this is what they've done now. This whole thing in Iraq is nothing but a strategic war game, a strategic game to get us involved in a general Middle Eastern war and to use that as the springboard to World War III so that when they collapse the total, totally collapse the global economy and usher in their one world currency, RFID chip, and their new world order, they will have everybody absolutely scared to death. The bio war will reduce the and, and nuclear war will reduce the population dramatically because these characters don't want seven billion 
million people, and they certainly don't want North Americans and Europeans. We're far too dangerous for them. If we ever figure out what's going on, they've had it and they know it. You know what all they have to do to figure out what's going on? Do two things. Tune into this show on this station which is, I think, the best of the of the shows that are kind of giving the Christian and the full geopolitical truth, because you need both. And then, number two, they need to take action. It's like Einstein said, and I quote this several times this week, that evil will not destroy the world, but people who know otherwise and see evil and do nothing about it. But if the people do something about it, even a minority of people, this whole game is over. If God-given people that see the vision, like we yeah, talked about in this first hour with Pastor Dave Lee. You don't have to have 90% of the people in the street. 5%. Five percent, five percent. We we're not asking. It's almost like what God said. You know, if I have, you know, ten or twelve people in Sodom and Gomorrah, I will not yet destroy the city. And then you get down to, if I have one righteous person, I will not destroy the city. I mean, God was even negotiating with Himself, saying, you know, I don't really want to destroy the city, but I'm coming down to my last one person. Of course, when Lot left, that was it. Well, you know what? I I, I sometimes think it, uh, I I may be wrong, but I I sometimes think I see God holding back. Because he doesn't want his children to kill one another. He doesn't want this to happen. But he knows it's going to happen, and I think he has held it back. But there comes a point at at, at which, you know, uh, it's, we have a responsibility. We have an obligation. And when your congressman and your senator comes to your town and he gets up there and he shovels the manure, it's time to pick it up and throw it right back in his face. Call him a liar. Call him a traitor to America. let the, everybody around within earshot say, you're a traitor, you're a liar, you're going to get us all killed, we're in an economic depression because of clowns like you, you're bought and paid for, you've sold the country out, you've sold the American people out, you ought to be hanging from a light post, you worthless SOB. You know, I think that if the pastors did it, they see, it needs to come from a Christian point of view because they're not going to have the courage to do that unless they have God behind them. And as I say, we talked about over- overcomers in the first hour with Pastor David Lee. The problem is it should be led by Christians more than I anybody agree. who's... Uh, a pastor might not mm. might not say you should be hanging from a light post, you SOB, no, but, 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 but at but, least he'll get but, the, he, the message well, he should, out. He should call out for justice. See, what you do is you pray for people, you pray for Obama, you pray for our leaders, and when you pray for them, God says, you know, when he's given the last drop of grace and he brings judgment. And I think that the grace always comes first before judgment, which is why instead of praying for judgment against people or destruction or cursing them, if we pray for them, he said, judgment is mine, saith the Lord. I think God says, you know, hey, these people have prayed for you. They're sinners. They're listening to me. You've had your grace. Now judgment's coming. And I think that's the way God deals with it. I think you're right. Folks, get right with God and do something. Talk to your friends. Make some noise because we're getting real close to. Well, I think by the fall, we're seeing the price of food. Uh, meat goes through the ceiling. Gasoline's going up like a rocket because they're destroying the oil supply in the Middle East. is likely to become very dear. It's going to get nuts. Bill is back. Hi, Chris. Hey, Dr. Cole. Hey, Tim's here, too. I'm here. <clears throat> Chris, I've got your reports uh, posted. I want you to summarize, and then we'll get into trying to connect some dots here. Welcome back to the well, Nutra Medical Report. We're joined by Chris Harrison and uh, Tim Alexander still here. Uh, Chris, let's summarize the reports of what you've uh, posted up today on Fukushima, the WIP reactor, the seismic testing, uh, the NRC with started with Jasco before he was removed from his position. So what's the latest? Well, I thought that I was just like talking with Tim. I thought the, the most important article that I've read today, I think that was uh, courtesy of uh, John Stokes' uh, info, was that, uh, was that uh, the U.S. taxpayers, uh, looks like there's an agreement for us to shoulder the burden of cleaning up Fukushima. And I did send you that article. And I, the U.S. I'm used... <clears throat> Yeah, I see that. It's, it's, U.S. taxpayers may end up paying for Fukushima disaster. Yeah, we're in the tailpipe of this mess, aren't we? Yeah, but also, uh, you know, uh, what or, I mean, right now it's it's kind of late, you know, in the, in the game. And all of a sudden, now they're going to want more money, and they're going to go ahead and squeeze the American public for it. 
there's supposedly an agreement. Now, I didn't dig into it and verify and confirm uh, that there's uh, you know a whole bunch of uh, how you know how the uh, how this works and everything else. But that's the only article I read. I said you know, I'm I'm appalled that uh, that now now after the fact, way after the fact, when it's going to cost so much more money, when uh, an ounce of prevention could have could have uh, prevented a lot of this. Uh, I, I, I want to invent a new word in the English language. I'm going to be call uh, say this. I am unsurprised. <laughs> I'm unsurprised too, but I'm just going to yeah. say that it, I am unsurprised. I am un- unbewildered. How's that? Another word. Yeah, yeah I'm <laughs> unimpressed either by this. So, <laughs> exactly, uh, guys. But, you know, uh, since we're going to be mm-hmm. printing all these trillions of dollars, and of course they, they're going to be worthless pretty soon, could they just kind of ship a billion my way? I mean, even for you know six months or so, I could probably have a lot of fun with a billion dollars. And well, it's just I remember talking. To, I, I had a friend of mine in the Hungarian Revolution that left in 1968, and he smuggled across the border. And he was pretty athletic. He was involved as a, as a wrestler in, in Hungary. And he told me how uh, the money became so valueless, just like the Weimar Republic of Germany, that they would wallpaper their outhouses because it was high-quality paper for the money. But it was worthless for anything other than that. And, and, of course, the colors were so bizarre, you'd only wallpaper their outhouses. You wouldn't put it in your house unless you had a really poor sense of taste. Uh, you know, high-quality paper, but bad design. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that. Mm. No way. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, you know. So, so, well, uh, let, let, it's, it's unfair. I mean, you're, you're looking at somebody making an agreement on my behalf, and I, I'm not agreeing to, to pay for all this, you know. And, uh, well, you know, now, now they know that, you know, they know who's boss, I guess, or they, they, they want us to think that that's the way. And sure, we'll just, uh, you know, we'll re- usurp some of their funding and go ahead and uh, use it to, uh, do the other the other work that needs to be done. So, if I, like I said, I, I'm appalled by it. Anyway, I know you're unsurprised. Yeah. So yeah. let, let's go through all the news. It says uh, TV trouble reported near ice wall. Now, last week we got an E&E news again. Tell us what E&E news said out of our report on the ice wall because I mentioned about the idea of using starlight, which is a compound that was invented in the 70s, could tolerate 16,000 degrees. They could make pylons and divert the water away from above the site, but you don't want to put anything near Fukushima Daiichi. The only thing you want to do is build a seawall below and then pump that water below that's lending up underneath there, going through the, the ground water, actually through the seafloor, and get it because it bubbles up for these steam jets, tritiated steam jets. And you want to take that water and then filter it with a proper system, not the ALP system that's useless. And by the way, the same people that designed the ALPs, and we, you found this out, uh, right. Chris. The same people. I mean, this is this is like SNL, Saturday Night Live. The same people were involved with making the uh, kitty litter decision to make green kitty litter divided divided by the crazy green idiots at the Department of Energy. So they have green kitty litter that turns these uh, waste containers at sites like the WIP reactor site in Carlsbad, but also at Hanford and possibly other sites. We don't know because they, they won't. It's really hard to dig around and find out just how bad these idiots spread this. But they turned them into bombs, and we found also that the criticality of having a hydrogen explosion can cause the plutonium to cause a critical reaction in a nuclear explosion. So, if one, say, of twenty or thirty of these containers blows, it's going to cause possibly a nuclear explosion that'll blow the heck out of the rest of them. It's not surprising WIP blew up. It's only a matter of time before Hanford and other sites blow up too. Uh, yeah, so, that's, uh, you know, and also, I, I guess uh, one one other report on there was some uh, was uh, it's unverified on my my end of it, but uh, he doubts that the waste stored in that in that pod was low level waste. It was more well from from judging from what he said. Now, if it's, if it's higher level waste and maybe fissionable products, we got a big problem. Just just like we talked about before. I guess exactly. the CNN news getting back to that was. Uh, uh, Cited our discussion of last week was uh, concerning uh, one of one of my colleagues who uh, I, I, I relayed what he what he pretty much told me to, and he called us with that uh, uh, that the thought of using an ice wall, and and right now that it's almost like a self limiting problem. Like right? they cannot <clears throat> form an ice plug at this point, which means I mean it's, you've got to think it's a real Goliath task trying to 
squeeze a great big section of the well, earth. It's, in, it's one. It's apparently one point four kilometers long. It's not like a little one around, us, say, uh, an old, uh, you know, slag, we call slag from a coal mine, which is usually a very temporary procedure. This is something you want to do long term. Plus, it'll increase the water level, make the soil and the land around it thixotropic, cause more subsidence. More likely, the buildings will just fall over. Increases the structural stresses on the buildings. I just think it's right. it's beyond insane. It's like uh, the people that are doing this must have radiation cerebritis. Their brains are on fire with nuclear isotopes and and uh, radiation induced astrocyte sickness. So God knows. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, I mean, they're going to need more. Let's put it this way: if they want this to be successful, it's not powerful enough. In other words, they can't remove enough heat to stop the flowing water and then turn it into a solid. You know, by freezing it, it's just it's not going to work. And and then even if it does, if it does form a freeze flood, well then, on the other hand, you'll get just like you said, sinkholes and and the right. soil and and all the yeah. other all the other problems that that would create. Right. So in Unit Four, they removed a thousand seventy eight fuel rod assemblies. So they're proceeding, but they're getting into more difficult ones. And you mentioned also here in your report that they're uh, the common cool pool, cooling pool. They're moving now to Unit. Six. If you remember, unit five and six reactors were still intact, but they turned them off. Uh, five and six. There were six reactors there, uh, including, by the way, reactor that was it was a MOX reactor, reactor three that was actually making plutonium pellets for nuclear detonators. It was an an illegal nuclear weapons <clears throat> generation plutonium pellet, uh, which is basically detonators for nuclear weapons facility. Uh, the other thing that's going on. I remember taking care of a gentleman by the name of Fairly Mowat. And he wrote a book many years ago called uh, Sea of Slaughter. And it was about the abnormal draggers and the abnormal fishing practices in the North Atlantic that destroyed the fisheries, which caused the fisheries to collapse. But what we now have is a collapse of life forms. And there's a number of articles over at Rents.com, because Rents has probably done more work than anybody in collecting articles on all these different things. I'm one step away, by the way, from having my site up as the Gamma uh, Radiation Testing Site for Vista, California, which will measure seven miles in in North County, San Diego, just below Pendleton Marine Corps Base at around 11, 1,200 feet uh, elevation, because we're up on the side of a mountain, seven miles in, there's mountains around here, blue granite mountains. Second hardest rock, by the way, in the world. The second hardest is in Scotland. And uh, uh, the uh, it'll measure gamma. It's only not going to measure the others. It'll just measure gamma. But gamma is what you want. And it'll, it'll measure gamma because it's very important to monitor things like cesium. Cesium is a big bad boy. Uh, it will not measure strontium because it's a beta emitter. And uh, unless you get a lot of it, <clears throat> you're not going to pick up beta emitters unless you bring it right over by the... But gamma will grade to the front screen of this device. If your count's going up in gamma, it means you're getting a surge of real nasty radioisotopes. Uh, plutonium, which is a gamma emitter. <clears throat> Cesium-137. These are nasty, nasty. Uh, gold concentrates in glands, causes cardiac arrhythmias, destroys brain tissue, all the glands in your body. Nasty stuff. Back in a moment. Welcome back. Um, I'll be on the second hour as a guest tonight on uh, on Rents Network. I show you every Thursday night, usually second hour. Sometimes on the second week, I'm in the third hour. Uh, and uh, we always spend quite a bit of time on Fukushima, on the WIP reactor, and on the NRC report by JASCO that started to look at seismic reports and the danger of loss of control of the corium and in the reactor core of nuclear reactors in America because of extreme weather, but especially seismic events. Uh, checking the structural integrity of the reactors to be able to withstand with these. And uh, so far, they're burying it with studies on studies. Uh, any new news on what's happening from JASCO's uh, initiated uh, process? Is there anything at all coming out to tell us which reactors have failed the test? Because uh, I know you had one, you posted up on the, on the site, uh, Chris, that looked like it was uh, not doing so good. We had another report of one of the reactor sites that's having troubles. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to talk about this. Uh, yeah, I think it was a Calhoun, uh, right? With these sandbags yeah, being that's filled. exactly the one. I was expecting <clears throat> you to hone right in on that. Yeah, uh, for Calhoun, yeah. I was surprised to see that. And that's the plant that uh, a couple of years ago in 2011 was shut down for for two years. <clears throat> and then now it's running again, and it looks like the flood waters are rising in the Missouri River and a couple of the other tributaries. 
Yeah, the some of these aren't even like taking... sites of, of nuclear reactions that are in danger of seismic, and it's just because the floodplain is higher than even the diesel generators to back up the power. It's stupid design into where they put them. Uh, and they're designed to be in, in, in tornado zones, or the, the flood water, li- water line is literally above the intake of the diesel generator, so it's going to flood them, and they're going to turn off. They are sandbagging uh, preemptively right now. So they're actually building sandbag walls. And I showed you that, that video. I thought that was uh, courtesy simplyinfo.org. Uh, and so, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, and it was, uh, yeah, like I said. You know, I how, to, how many of the, the big question yeah. is how many reactors have failed the test in terms of seismic testing, which they're supposed to have had all the data out by now. It's a couple months. Which reactors failed? Well, the ones that I've seen, they they all have something to do. So they all failed, in my my opinion. There's not there's in no other words. In, this it, in, in other words, all the reactors, like the Ablo Canyon in California, all the reactors sitting near uh, near the New Madrid fault system, and there's fault lines all over America. It turns out that many of the reactors are on coastal areas or on rivers. There's, I would say, just as a ballpark, half of the reactors in America are sitting near a fault zone where they can be struck. Half. And a number of other ones are in additional extreme weather, or they're literally designed below the high water mark, so the water can flood out the diesel generator, so there's no backup power. Guys, you realize if if we do get into, uh, if not tomorrow, five years down the road, whenever, God knows, I don't, uh, World War Three. How are you? What's going to happen if uh, you, you have EMP weapons going off? So you lose uh, your your grids all over the country. Uh, you have bio war. You have radiation from atomic blast. Uh, you're not going to be able to service all these reactors. Well, They're even going if you to can get even if you have Fukushima's the, everywhere. Exactly. Even if you could service them by getting in flying in giant heavy lift helicopters, diesel fuel. Number one, the diesel generators have to have to be working, which they tend to fail. And number two, you have to be able to continuously get that material in. If the freeways are jammed up, because cars have been hit by EMP, so the freeways are all gone, you have to fly it with heavy lift helicopters. You have to have an attack military that can actually do that. Can they, uh, can they appropriate the military forces and heavy lift helicopters to actually service these reactors? Because we can have an entire rash of reactors, even if they're not physically, structurally destroyed, that they lose their backup power that will eventually go uh, Fukushima. So <clears throat> I think we're literally sitting on, it's like, see, let's put it this way, it's like having grenades underneath the cushions of your, of your living room chairs while you're watching movies, and someone moves the wrong way and the pin slides out. Whoops. Mm-hmm. It's like, Whoops. that's not wise. So, uh, Chris, that's, that's that issue. The other thing is what's happening at WIP and at Hanford. Anything new there? Well, I don't have much new information other than uh, what we, we discussed before, that, that uh, one scientist who claims that uh, maybe, the, maybe the level of waste that's stored in those drums, especially that exploded, is actually high-level high, high level waste instead of low-level waste. So we're right. So High-level means it's more fissionable. More. Or fissionable material that right, a- a- americium, a plutonium. Very, in other words, these are gamma emitters that can induce a critical reaction. They can actually create a critical reaction in a nuclear explosion. The gamma emitters are neutron emitters, right? Uh, no, g- gamma, gamma is. Uh, well, the neutron emitters are. Uh, oh boy, I gotta go back to my uh, uh, ice <clears throat> topic uh, on this one. There are there are some that, that are uh, neutron emitters just spontaneously, and they would uh, decay and uh, give off a neutron, uh, and then they would interact with uh, the fissionable material uh, potentially. But uh, I, don't, I don't know that that's happening, but I do, I do believe the part about it being a hydrogen explosion um, yeah. due to the co- decomposition of a green kitty litter. But, you know, that, that causes a whole bunch of uh, problems, and uh, okay. one of them is that it's a huge dirty bomb. Uh, I want to revisit this uh, question again, and uh, we talked about it before. We now have a war where Iran is getting in to try to protect the holy sites in eastern Iraq. Uh, strange bedfellows were actually allies with Iran trying to stop the ISIS from not only destroying the uh, Iraqi yeah, government. Not really. That's, that's the image. That's the, the image. reality is ISIS is <clears throat> funded by us and controlled right, and the, armed by here, us. Here's the danger. The Israelis, because we gave them long-range bank tanker bombers and other equipment, including the GB-54 long-range deep bunker buster nukes, 
Uh, they plan on hitting the Bashar reactor and deep uh, centrifuge sites like the Qum Mountain, the Holy Mountain in Iran, these other sites. Uh, we could have massive clouds of radiation if they strike the Bashir reactor. How bad would it be if they actually hit with high explosives or nukes the Bashir reactor? What would happen? Well, it depends on where they hit. No, I mean, at the very least, it would remove the ability for them to uh, cool the core, and then you have a problem. Uh, I'm talking about the, the core that. completely gone. I'm talking about vaporize the entire site, turn to oh, an well, atomic then, vapor. You mean aerosolize? Aerosolized, b- 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 Bashir is now aerosolized. It is now no longer a physical structure. It is now between here and the cosmos. Well, well, I'll tell you what. That that would be that would be the worst possible case because there would be no way to, uh, you know, attenuate or or, or yeah. temper that. Well, there would be a plume of death that would stretch to China. Right. Well, our our yeah. physicians for social responsibility have calculated that if that happened that the amount of radiation would spread across Myanmar because it's directly downwind. It would go across southern China, which is the primary dragon cities that make all the industrial work, not north China. It would cross South Korea, Japan, and would head directly toward America. We'd have a giant plume of radiation on top of Fukushima heading toward us. So these morons don't understand if you start a nuclear war there, and again, it won't just be a one-way deal. Uh, Russia is going to use nukes too. They'll nuke uh, Israel. They'll nuke uh, some of these other Islamic cities like Saudi Arabia. In fact, the dialogue going between uh, Mr. Putin, who they now call Tsar Putin, which I think is ridiculous, uh, and the uh, the king of Saudi Arabia, is he told them that he would nuke Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, after the nasty comments by the king of Saudi Arabia against Russia. Uh, you know, Saudi Arabia was threatening Russia, and that's not a wise thing to do. Russia is not, these are people you don't mess with. So... Uh, they're not being treated with respect, and again, we need to treat them with respect. They want to make a business deal. They want to be treated with respect. And instead of treating them like, again, in a Christian way, strength, through, strength but verify, you know, whether it's nuclear weapons or other things, we could, uh, out of strength, have a deal with the Russians and the Chinese, stop industrial espionage, pro- properly set up uh, tariffs to protect our industry, and at the same time, help to build up their countries and have some interlocking exchange systems so we don't have massive debt blow our world economy to pieces. But all the pieces are in place to blow it apart this fall for this summer or fall to have a big war. Uh, Dr. East. Bell, you're totally right. The problem that we don't make the right choice is a spiritual one. Yeah, it's all spiritual. That's why when people keep that out of the question. And that's why I returned to the spiritual. In the first hour, we had Pastor Dave Lee. And I tell people, if you don't include Yeshua God in the picture, you're never going to get this right. You're going to think, well, we just elect this and that politician if we just do this and that. No, 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 no. This is personal. This gets right down to the grandmother, who she, how she's going to vote, how she's going to talk at her at the checkout at the counter, how she's going to confront her congressman. It's going to be a wave of indignation from the public, not just here in America, but around the world and all the craziness. And we see it in elections. The UKIP in Britain. We see it in the elections in the European Parliament trying to rebuke all the uh, the European Union, what they're doing, NATO. We see it everywhere. I, I predict uh, Scotland's going to vote to succeed in September and there won't be a UK. I agree with you. I agree with you, Tim. Uh, Chris, any closing comments? Uh, Fukushima, ice wall, no. Starlight, yes. Nothing's being done correctly. Now they want to give us the tab. Hey, America, you're going to pay four trillion dollars so you don't. You can still have babies. How's that? Yeah, whether you, whether you like it or not. Four trillion. <laughs> Just go print it. We don't mind if it looks. It's a little bit wet from the glo- from the the uh, the ink. Just print it for us. Thank you.